It's your brother, Larry Adenekon, welcoming you to the Really, Really Knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of God, all powered by the Pastor Larry Adenekon Center for Exuspiration, the place. This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of Jesus Christ. We are sharing truth this morning on when it's too late for repentance. And that's coming from Hebrews chapter 10, 26 through 31. Little prayer and we get into it together. Father, we bless your name, O God. Worship and magnify you. Lord, we all confess that beside you there is no other God. And, and it's a great thing that we have you to our God. Thank you for this times we share with your people you have ordained you have uh, sustained lord we ask oh god that this morning again will witness your power in action thank you in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen hallelujah all right then hebrews 10 uh, 26 for if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth the no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation, which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose he will be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who says, Vengeance is mine, I will repay says the Lord, and again the Lord will judge his people and it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Okay. <clears throat> so this uh, is again a passage that uh, um, some people uh, ask about, let me put it that way. We have read something similar to this when we were in, in chapter 6 actually, uh, but let us look at it again. The first thing to say is that when it says, for if we sin willfully, now that's if we sin there is in the present continuous tense if we continue to sin if we sin habitually that's it if we sin habitually if we sin uh defiantly if you say if we sin carelessly lecadesically can continue to sin like that and live in sin like that that's what he's saying after we have received the knowledge of the truth so the first thing is that we are the, the, this person you know being referred to here is sinning habitually is in present continuous tense is in um, yeah and then the next thing is after receiving the knowledge of the truth now um like we said earlier on in this same hebrews the knowledge of the truth is very important i think it's in in, in chapter six can we look at chapter six very quickly which says something like that from verse four for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened that's the way you put it that way um in this place it says receive the knowledge of the truth okay so when you have been enlightened or received the knowledge of the truth and now 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 that's to me my own take is that it's not everybody who professes to be a christian or Christ, professes to be a born again who truly has the knowledge of the truth honest um the truth is what makes you free uh, that like we say all the time you know on this particular channel not everybody not everyone among us who says oh i'm a christian too by the grace of god oh i belong to christ i'm born again not everybody has that knowledge honest and so um i'm um i'm uh, underscoring this particular uh uh clause inside that whole thing that number one the person continues to sin willfully number two this is after having received the knowledge of the truth not somebody who is uh, compromising here and there and sinning here and there because he doesn't really have the truth. But this one is about somebody who has the knowledge of the truth and yet decides to live in sin, live his life according to sin. He says there are no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. Yeah. He says at that point in time, you will not get any room for repentance anymore because you see you have come to the knowledge of the truth but you have chosen that in spite of that knowledge that you have this is the way you want to live that's it and so bible makes us to know that at times by our actions not necessarily by words but you say at times by our actions we deny god by our actions yes we say that uh, yeah well god can say whatever it, yeah, it is he has to offer by our actions and many times people say that actions they actually speak louder than the things that word can describe so this is an example of such a thing 
Amen. So it says, what remains for that person is a certain. It is sure. Ah, and that, that makes me sure that <laughs> it's sudden, certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversary. In other words, what God prepared for the enemies, not for you, not for a child of God. That was not God's intention, but what he prepared for the enemies would become that person's portion. God forbid. God help us to win in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So when we, after coming to the knowledge of the truth, jettison the truth or ignore the truth and choose to live this way, our actions say more than our words certain things. And, and it says it's what remains now for such a person, no repentance, honestly, can you know bring anything back. But a certain fearful expectation of judgment, that's what you should be sure of. Ah. Then in, in, in verse 28, he said something that we was trying to refer to yesterday. Anybody who rejected Moses' law died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Yeah, like I said, it is the angels that, that uh, ran all those things then. And <laughs> you, your mistake, your error, your, without mercy, it will happen instantly. That was it in the Old Testament. But to the glory of God, we have a lot, lot, something fantastically better, you know, um, than that. It says, so anybody who read the Lord die without mercy, of how much worse punishment do you suppose such a person will be thought worthy or considered worthy who has done the, the following things? Number one, trampled the son of god on the foot in other words that's the way you conduct yourself without saying anything what you have done amounts to trampling jesus on the foot the the one we, in in chapter six it says what you have done is crucifying jesus the second time that's what it says in chapter six this one says tramples the son of god on the foot another one counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing in other words commonized the blood of the covenant rendered it no different from the blood that you see at the abattoir that's just what you're trying to say there you commonized it you know com com completely and then you have insulted the holy spirit so these are three big things and yet this person hasn't even said a word by his actions alone <laughs> in a number of things that were, that's why you should be careful the things you do or the things you allow yourself in you uh, you find yourself doing or pra practicing or exercising yourself in be careful god help us because you see many times if we say that it is your actions that show us your faith we have said that many 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 times so uh be careful so he just rounds off now and you know quoted some really terrifying old testament scriptures <laughs> and uh, that will say because we know him who said vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord and again the bible says the lord will judge his people and yet a third one it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living god so he was saying that the reason i'm saying all these things is that it is good for you to know that god gets angry too it is good for you to know that god can discipline too it is good for you to know that god can judge as well you know and all that when you have that understanding that oh he's a god of love in fact he is love but that doesn't mean that he doesn't get angry it doesn't mean that he doesn't judge it doesn't mean that he doesn't discipline or punish you know and that's what's trying to let, let us see that he does all those things as well okay he punishes as well he judges as well he reprimands as well he um yeah and all those things it's good for us to know that and to balance things out therefore as you receive knowledge of the truth it's important for you to let that knowledge apply in your life and you just don't live your life anyhow because you think you are in the period of grace at the end of the day you may you may be doing those three terrible things that are described here but i'm persuaded that um, none of us uh, listening to this will ever fall into that category but at least it's good for us to know and have an understanding and be able to explain to people who could ask you questions you know in this regard so thank you very much for sharing time with us today I wish you a fantastic day at work god bless you